Hi, I won't keep you long, but on behalf of producer, executive producer Howard Freiberg and executive producer Cheryl uh, Starlakis and uh, director of photography Ira Singh, um, we want to thank uh, Doc NYC for your generous support and welcoming us uh, so wonderfully to the festival, especially uh, Minky and her team at Human Rights Watch, to which without this would never have happened in many, many ways. Um, and we hope that, um, oh, and also the athletes. Um, I spoke to all of them and they're very proud and very thankful that you're all here with us this evening. Um, so enjoy, not exactly sure I'd use that word. Embrace the film and um, I hope you all stay for the Q&A. Thanks very much. Uh, just, I wanted to say a few words to introduce the film, introduce the content and the context. I think many of you are aware there's a World Cup coming up in Qatar. There are the Olympics in the, in the summer of 2024. There's the Women's World Cup next summer in uh, Australia and New Zealand. So this is a, a big moment for global sport. But we also have to acknowledge you don't have sport without athletes. And this really important groundbreaking story tells, explains what happens to athletes when they don't have basic human rights. So I really see this film as an important social justice document. You will never look at sport the same way again once you've seen this film and heard these stories. And I, I too wanna want to open the film and then the Q&A by saluting the courage of the athletes who you will see on the screen. And unfortunately for many of them, you will not see them on the playing field, on the track, and playing the sports that they love and had enormous dreams for. So with that, I think we can begin the film. She's making an important phone call. <laughs> Hi. Yay. That's all for you. That's all for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Did you get Paoshi? Not yet. Okay. Well, we, we can start. Well, yeah. I would love to ask a couple of questions and then open into the audience. Um, how did you get started on this journey? This is a bit of a journey, especially you can tell through the filmmaking, it's been some time. How did you find your subjects? How did you get personally involved? And then of course, how did how, join how, you on that How did I? Um, well, I was, uh, or I am, an Olympian, and I competed in 84. Um, I was 12, no I wasn't. And, um, and uh, I was sex tested. Um, they called it femme testing, uh, gender testing, sex testing. Um, when I was an athlete, I think it was femme testing, and then we'd get a femme card. You saw my friend Judy's femme card in the in the film. And so, and I also was uh, a, an advocate and uh, for women in sport as a young person. And and I did not um, retire from sport. I quit sport for my own uh, um, reasons. So. I then, you know, left sport behind and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee and became a filmmaker. <laughs> and um, I knew that at one point I would come back to, uh, to sport. And Bruce Kidd, uh, who is in the film, um, it is a dear old friend of mine. I've known him since I was a kid. Uh, and um, he introduced me. Of course, I knew Castor's story. I followed it closely. Uh, in great support of her in 09. And then um, met, uh, Bruce introduced me to Paoshni and then Kyle and then Katrina and Minky and, and then of course the great privilege of meeting Annette uh, and Margaret and Duty and Eva uh, in the process. Um, it took a really long time, it takes a long time. And it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard story. But um, it, it's um, it, it was a it was a privilege. I'm just getting Peyoshni on the line right now. Okay. Oh, she's on. Okay, that's great. Um, can you please elaborate on the personal story? Oh, sorry, Peyoshni is here. Do you want it to? No, just put her on speaker. On speaker. And That'd then be great. And then people can give. 
There. Did you want to Love it. Go, Payeshni. That's, that's for you, Payeshni. Oh, say, say it again. I wish I was there. We wish you were here too. She's here in spirit. So we're just doing the Q and A. So go ahead. Well, this is a personal story for you as an athlete. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about bridging the, the history of all this? Because it's it's much longer than just that. Oh, we cast her some money in two thousand nine. It's it's a long road. Well, yeah, it's a really long road. Um, well, I think since the beginning of women's sport, wouldn't you say, Minky? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one thing that struck me was that shocking, shocking figure of more than 10,000 mm -hmm. female athletes who've been sex tested. And I think you all now understand what those terrible two words, sex test, mean. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just shocking. Um, yeah, so before this story... Um, you know, I had teammates that uh, did not continue to compete. Um, Peoshni, can you talk a little bit about sort of the, you know, the long sort of history of sex testing and why it's so important that we're talking about this now? Uh, sure, Phyllis. I think your phone um, talks about uh, it very beautifully um, and uh, in a very powerful way and I think the fact that the film uh, prioritizes voices of athletes um, who have experienced it and who have been impacted directly by uh, by these regulations over a period of time is really important. I don't think I have anything much to say as to the history of the uh, you know sex testing policies in sport, um, I will rather emphasize, and which your film also does, the recent movements and the recent changes which, which has been made possible because of a lot of us coming together, the alliances we have formed internationally, you know, scholars, activists, advocates, media persons, athletes, legal practitioners, all coming together uh, organizations like Human Rights Watch, and I believe Minky Warden and Kyle Knight are present there. Um, and I think all of this, all of us coming together, and now the IOC has a framework which talks about uh, non discrimination and inclusion, which talks about primacy of um, bodily autonomy, which talks about prevention of harm, which talks about. Um, you know, no presumption of advantage. I think these are really important things that have happened in recent times because of a lot of work from among us, but also a lot of resilience from among the athletes. And I believe uh, <laughs> it's okay. Talk about you know, it does sort of you know talk about that that kind of resilience and the fight back that Kastor Semenya, Duki Chand, and Nagesa as well as Evangeline Ken and all the other athletes that you will hear about in this film um, have done to do the work and to the stage that we are in right now. Uh, the one, thank you. The one thing that I do want to say is, um, yes, I was sex tested and so were all of my teammates. But my lived experience as uh, uh, an athlete from the Global North mm -hmm. with all the privilege that, uh, I must be tired. Every time I go to talk, I'm choking up. Um, all the, with, with the privilege. So, you know, I, I thought as a filmmaker that um, my common ground was being an Olympian. And you know, there's sort of the question, you know, coming from my point of view, and so how how do you, uh, and it was an incredible learning experience for me, you know, how to, how to get out of the way as much as possible, and listening, and, 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 and what's, like, my point of view from who I am and my lived experience, and the lived experience of Annette, for example, which you all saw in the film, so it comes from, from a, a, a very different point of view. Yeah. My experience is, yes, 100%, and, and um, no man has ever been sex tested. No um, a, a male identified um, 
athlete, we, we live in a binary in, in sport, as we all know. So that's the binary that we live in, and it may change. And one thing I wanted to say is just from a, Paoshni's really talking about the human rights point of view. And I wanted to draw attention to um, what Annette said about these powerful federations who are, as you literally saw on screen, there's such a benefit to seeing all of these men parading across. But it's men in the federations controlling the lives of women and girls. And the title of our report, which we published in 2020, was from a quote from Annette. And the title of the report is, They Are Chasing Us Away From Sport. I think one of the great achievements of this film is that you actually took us to the villages and so that we could see that sport is not just about medals and the Olympic podium, but it's about the ability to lift yourself and your family and your village out of economic, out of poverty. But also, if, if your career as an athlete is taken away from you, then how will you provide for yourself and your family? So in the world, you often hear that sport is an is a avenue to education. You can get scholarships. You can get a job. You can get... Uh, you, can, you can get a place on the world stage to be an icon for others to follow. But equally, sport, controlled by men as it is, can take all of those things away. And for these courageous athletes, we saw the, the, the impact on their health and their mental health. So, uh, and the impact on Annette's health, I think, was especially terrible. So I, it is... These federations are destroying the health and the mental health of female athletes, and that cannot continue. I, I wanted to just ask about that in terms of these federations and whatnot. I saw that like we didn't get comment from the IOC, but what was that process like of trying to get that cooperation or lack of cooperation? Oh, well, I just called them. <laughs> um, and um, they said no. <laughs> Um, well, it was, um, the, oh, well, World Athletics, hmm. Yeah, no, I, um, I, 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 re I spoke to their head of communications for a long time, and she was going to set up a meeting for us with Co, um, who I knew. He was much older than me. Um, and, um, and, uh, and then it just never happened, and then we just let it go, because, you know, you can only ask. 172 <laughs> times, and then you just kind of get the picture that they're not going to participate in the film. Um, Paoshni was was uh, you know instrumental in sort of connecting me with uh, uh, all of the um, athletes and um, and trusting us to you know share that kind of space because it's it's very personal. Um, do, do you want me to ask Annette a question? Oh, I would love if she can maybe excoriate her own thoughts. I would love if we can get one from the audience and then that can maybe have time to just say what she'd like. Would you, <laughs> you'd let me know, do you want me to do yeah, that I'm now? Yeah, I'm gonna go to the audience and then we're now? gonna okay. Annette be last. So okay, can Annette, her. can you hear me? Yes, I, You're going to be last. <laughs> They're gonna to want to hear your thoughts, okay? Okay. Okay, well, so I'll, I'll let you know when that is. <laughs> All right. Are you asleep? <laughs> we have one right here in the front, so be ready. I'm awake. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, you're here in the front. Yes. Hi, my name is Kensia de Seville. And my question is for you, because you say you are an athlete. How did you find the courage to become an advocate for an athlete? Hmm. 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 That's a great question. Um, the question was for Annette, how did you find the courage to be an advocate for athletes? Okay, that's a good question. Um, uh, according to my thinking and also to my like my love of the uh the athletics and the sports as a, which was a career and which was like my job 
which was making me to earn like a living, not only for myself, and just also for my family, my siblings. So I, I got the courage of coming up to be a face advocate is that because I was seeing something which was like running so fast and seeing many, many athletes, like they come one time appearing, you find next next year, if you, the athlete comes up this year, you come again next year, you look for the athlete, you don't see the athlete coming back on track. So whereby it's something which was like a, they were like they are just killing like the sport from uh, athletes and the upcoming women in uh, the sport. So it was something which was very very crucial and sensitive, just to be there, look and go. And uh, according to what happened to me, and according to what was happening by the rules which he brought up, which was brought up by IWF, relations really, it wasn't good. So I decided not to be quiet because I was seeing very many athletes and most of them, they come from humble families and mm -hmm. whereby, the whereby they target is like, we athletes so really they think like, oh, we are illiterate or something like that. We don't know nothing about. I don't know where they think about that or they just choose that these are the kind of people who are like in Philly or something like that. That's according to my thinking. I think they take us like to be inferior. Mm. Yeah, and they take themselves to be superior. Yeah. So whereby it's like uh, when I reach in, uh, when I look in the Western countries, I don't hear such circumstances and also such optimism in now, uh, which can, all, all cases which comes up from Western countries, whereby I've uh, just seen most of the athletes who have been out of the track, they are almost coming from the south of the globe. Mm -hmm. So, according to that, it gave me courage of coming up and also. By the time when I reached work, started talking to Dr. Payoshini and uh, according also to what happened to me, all that circumstances and all the challenges I faced, I say no, let me come up. That that which is away is the problems which are coming up. And like, I come up and become a whistleblower so that we save more young upcoming women who are out there who doesn't know really what's going on. Mm. And we are by also most of their like uh, officials from different federations. I think they don't know, they were not knowing that this type of thing is like destroying athletes' lives. Yeah. Well, but also it was like uh, a problem whereby like, everyone was lacking like uh, very straight information about what's causing the athletes running out of the truck. So thank That's you, thank right. You. <laughs> um, did you have pay? I think pay. Reply to the world question or? Yes. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're getting kind of wrote off here, so mm -hmm. I would love if you guys could give us a, a beautiful final word. We're kind of squeezing a bit of time, so. I, 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 yes, thank you, Annette. I, I think Payoshni wanted to say something. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Phyllis. No, I think uh, I, I was just going to repeat what Annette said already. Mm -hmm. Because every time we were, uh, you know, there was a, when I started talking to her and after that, every time media wanted to uh, sort of speak to Annette and that was the only question that I used to ask her that are you ready for it and she would Hello. always say that I will have to do it because hey, oh, um, I want to make sure that the girls and women after me don't go through what I have mm -hmm. gone through so that was always something that Annette kept on saying until date every time the media wherever Annette is requested to speak 
this has been the message that she keeps saying that I don't mind repeating and talking about the you know incredibly traumatic experience that I had because I care about the women who come after me. Thank you. I'll just wrap and I'll Please, say that you, um, uh, you know, f film is is film. You know, we 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 meet extraordinary people. We have we raise the money. We we come together. We collaborate creatively on what the visual language will be or won't be or how to approach things. Um, but really, what documentary film does is it has an opportunity to bring Minky and Peoshni and Annette and Kyle and Dr. Janelle and Allison and Katrina and Jim and and Castor and Eva and everyone. And what it does is it just puts everybody in one place. So th this is these guys have been working tirelessly in this space. The athletes have experienced trauma for years. What this film does now is puts everybody in one place so that maybe it's like a, a one-stop shop of, or, an, or an asset. It's an yeah. asset for impact. Yeah. If I could say one word about impact, and, and impact means how do we change the, the terrible things we've seen on the screen tonight. We don't have to accept this going forward. And I mentioned we have the Olympics, we have the Women's World Cup coming up, we have a lot of opportunities on the horizon, and we don't have to accept these terrible injustices any longer. Uh, Peyoshni mentioned that there have been changes at the IOC level that give a framework for inclusion. That's a good start, but world athletics is still excluding these women from the sport that they love, and as Annette said, smashing their dreams. We don't have to accept it, and by the way, it happens in soccer, it happens in many other sports as well. I should, I think that's very important. Women are being excluded from the Women's World Cup right now. So we don't have to accept this, and we can bring pressure on the IAAF, there's no reason, um, having seen the evidence on the screen, we don't have to accept this any longer, and sport can be a vehicle for social justice change. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks very it's much for coming. Pleasure. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Annette and Peyoshi, a round of applause. Can we keep it going? Thank, Thank you, you so much, guys. Thank you, Annette.